Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. And it's in the valley of the dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asks me, Son of man, can these bones live? Then he said to me, Prophesy these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word, the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath, enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come <clears throat> upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life and then you will know that I am Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. <coughs> Excuse me. So I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring them up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Here endeth the reading for today. So as we continue on our boot camp for the soul series, good news if you haven't enjoyed this series, next week is the last week. But if we take a look, we've seen the need for change, we've hit the reset button, we've spiritually hydrated ourselves, and hopefully last week we allowed God to redefine us. Now throughout the series, I have found that each of these words in each week has been, for the most part, an uplifting theme. Now, each of them do require us to do work, but as you well know, anything worth doing does require effort. But our saying for this week is dead end. If you look at our graphic this morning, just looking at it doesn't look very um, uplifting, does it, right? dead end boot camp for the soul. That doesn't sound very uplifting. It sounds uh, pretty kind of foreboding, right? Do we ever really think of a dead end in a positive light? So what comes to mind for you when you hear dead end? Is it a street that leads nowhere? A relationship that's run its course? Do you think about a job that wasn't what you wanted it to be? Or do you focus on that first word, dead, and think about death? You see, we as a culture, we don't like anything that could lead us to a dead end. We always want to be focusing on something that's moving up or moving forward. But maybe a dead end isn't as bad as we think it is. And so today we're going to talk about why that might be the case. I want to tell you a story about a dead end that I ran into in my own life. 
As I was in my third year of working in what I would call my second real job out of college, I went in for my yearly evaluation with my boss, and I had been doing quite well in the job, if I do say so myself. Well, at least I thought I had been doing well. See, I had been promoted at the end of my second year. My second year meeting went great. I got a promotion. And that job paid well enough that Carlin and I were able to move into a bigger home that wasn't on Front Street, and we were expecting our second child. Now, each of, and each of those things were thanks in part to the job that I had at the time. So as I sat down with my boss to discuss my performance, she seemed really happy with the work that I was doing. And she asked me to lay out my plans for what I thought my future would be in that job. And I told her that it was my hope to continue working there, that I had hoped to be promoted again to the senior level within the next five years. I wasn't expecting it, you know, that year, obviously. I had just been uh, promoted the year before. But within five years, I wanted to move up again. And then in 10 years, I had hoped that I would be the head of the department. See, I had done the math and figured out how old she was. And I knew when she was planning to retire. Happened to be about 10 years from that point. Now, I thought this sounded like a solid plan. And after all, she did ask me what my plans were for the future. But let me offer you a bit of advice. If you were ever asked that question by a supervisor, where do you see yourself in the future? The answer to that question is never. I hope to have your, day, your job one day, boss. Now, after we had talked about this, the uh, mood of the meeting changed. It went from one that was going well to one that was going very poorly. She responded by telling me that I would never go any higher than where I was currently working, that I could stay in that position forever as far as she was concerned. Now this job, which had been a good fit for me and allowed me to do those things I'd mentioned before, move into a bigger home, plan to have a second child, it suddenly didn't look so great to me anymore. You see, now there was nowhere to go. It was a dead end for my career. At the time, I was only around 27 years old. So I began to notice all the little things that I hated about this job. And within six months of that meeting, I left to take another position. You see, knowing that I had come to a dead end, that was enough for me to know or to feel like I had to move on from that job, even though it had been good to that point. Now, I don't regret what happened there because of this how much harder would it have been for me to accept a call into ministry if I had indeed become the boss of that department? You see, it would have worked out to be about the same time frame, about 10 years from when I had that meeting. If everything had gone the way I had planned it, I would have had to leave a much higher paying job to go into ministry. You see, with God, there are no dead ends. And I will say that again, just in case you didn't catch it. With God, there are no dead ends. Oh, sure, there are cul-de-sacs. You might need to drive down a little way and then realize that you need to make a circle and head right back out where you were. There are roads that you will drive down, and then maybe you find yourself, if you drive like me, having to make a 20-point turn in order to get out and get back on the right road. And there are roads that you drive down sometimes, and it turns out they're a narrow one-way street, and you get to the end of it, and you need to white-knuckle it as you back up and reverse your way out. But there are no dead ends. You see, in each of these situations, we are at the wheel. We find ourselves heading down the wrong path in life. We chase the things that we believe are important, to this world, but God will always offer you a way to turn around. And you see, that is for us to accept Christ and to repent. 
to call out to God and say, yes, Lord, I know now I'm on the wrong path. I've made a mistake and I need to turn and go back where you are leading me. But I know that you will guide me. And I know that you will help me go back to where I need to be. You see, when we repent, when we turn away from the sins that we have done, that is when we begin to get back on the right path. Sometimes it is easy. Sometimes it's like a cul-de-sac. All you got to do is circle and go right back out. Sometimes it's a little harder and you have to start to try to do better. Stop when you make a mistake and then start again like you're turning around. And then sometimes you have to white knuckle that steering wheel and back up that one way street to get away from those sins. But the good news is no matter what the situation is, God is always there with us. And he's going to help us if we earnestly repent. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, pastor, that might be true for you or true of others here. But what I have done, God will not be willing to help me with. Well, what I have done is beyond turning away from that dead end. I've been on this dead-end street so long, I can't even begin to turn it around. But that brings us to our scripture for today. You see, Ezekiel was a prophet in the Old Testament. He prophesied during the time when the Jews were living in exile in Babylon. Their homeland, the promised land, had been taken from them and destroyed because those people had turned away from God. The majority of them had been taken away from their homeland and were now living as slaves to the Babylonians. Now these people, these chosen people, spent many years in captivity. And a lot of them spent their time complaining. Complaining about how they had lost their homeland. The problem for them was that they were not willing to admit to themselves that they had gone down the wrong path in the first place and moved away from what God wanted them to be. So Ezekiel is among these people as God's prophet. And God sends his spirit among Ezekiel and takes him into the valley of the dry bones. And God asked him, Do you think these bones can come alive? And I love what Ezekiel says here. He doesn't just say yes or no. He says, oh God, only you know. What do you think you would say if you found yourself in the same situation? Hopefully we are as faithful as Ezekiel was. God tells him to prophesy over the bones and bring them back to life. Ezekiel, ever the faithful servant, does as commanded. And God does indeed bring the bones back to life. Now, you need to know that this just wasn't about the bones themselves. It wasn't about God just bringing them and raising them back up. God was showing the people through Ezekiel that if they were willing to turn back to him, that God would restore them to their kingdom. And he makes that promise to us as well. If we are willing to turn back to him, he will restore us. He will make the dried out, tired bones of who we are come back to life. You simply have to be willing to call upon him as Ezekiel was. So I want you to remember that story when you think that God won't be willing to help you out with your own mistakes. If he could bring back the bones of the valley back to life just by having his servant speak over them. Surely he can bring back your bones to life as well. If he can turn a whole people back to him. Just by showing them this. Then surely he can help us turn away from our dead ends as well. See what I want you to remember this week. Is this there is no such thing as a dead end to our God. Whenever we think that we've come to that dead end chances are he has a plan for us 
to turn away from that dead end and head to where he really wanted us to be in the first place. And I want you to know that when you feel like you've reached that dead end, what it truly is is an opportunity. It is an opportunity for you to call upon the Lord so that he can set you on the right path. So my challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing in your life that you might describe as a dead end? And this week, it is time for you to call upon the Lord and to turn away from it. Amen.